for Erie County Clerk, and the gentleman who has stood up for our Second Amendment rights and the rights of New York State citizens on several very important issues right now. I'm alluding to the driver's license issue, the green light that was just passed and signed. If you don't think that's tied into the Second Amendment, you need to rethink a little bit. It's huge. So, I'd like to bring up Mickey Kearns, Erie County Clerk, and a friend of the past. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here tonight, especially when it's been raining every single night during this summer, even though summer starts June 21st, to come out on uh, such a nice evening to, and give me this opportunity to speak to you on a few important issues. I do have a few uh, house cleaning things that I would like to at least mention. Number one, uh, as uh, was mentioned, there is an op-ed that I wrote to the Buffalo News. It was done in uh, mid-May of this year, talking about the green light bill. If you would like a copy of that, it's right by Russ, right there. You can come up and take that. In addition, uh, this bill was passed so quickly, and the governor signed it so quickly, uh, we did want to begin a petition, and we are putting together a coalition of people uh, to fight this still, even though the governor has signed the bill. So next to Russ, there is a uh, sign-in sheet. If you could just, if you want, this will not be used for political purposes. This will only be used uh, on this issue. If you want to give us your name, your telephone number, and your email, uh, we can reach out to you, and we are going to be needing volunteers in the future. So it's not required. It's not mandatory. It's just something uh, that's there. If you want to participate and be involved in government, uh, prior to being in politics, uh, I was a consultant for a fundraising firm, and we used to always say, if you want, uh, the first rule of volunteerism is giving people a job. So that's what you want to do, and you want to be involved in your government in any way you can be involved, uh, in any small way. It's talking to a neighbor, it's talking to a family member, and it's talking to a friend. And the most important thing is talking to people and giving them the truth about this issue. And that's why I brought that op-ed uh, that I drafted, because I think it's important uh, that people know the truth. Uh, I was telling Bud and his beautiful blind uh, Lois, I will be on tonight Fox News at 11.30, and I will also be on Fox News tomorrow at 6 and 8 a.m., so if you can get up that early, um, I heard Donald Trump will be watching. I can't confirm that, but I know he likes to watch that early hour um, show. Uh, we're going to be on there, and we're going to give uh, we're going to give the the media the truth about this issue. And it's funny because I did do a great interview with a, a nice young man, and after I interviewed with him about this bill and talked about the facts, the facts. Uh, he said to me, Mr. Kearns, I'm liberal, and I think you have a point. <laughs> and I thought that was nice. He at least was honest with me, and he said that, and I think he really meant it, after we really discussed the issue. So I was elected, with your help and your support, to become the Erie County Clerk for a full four-year term. Uh, prior to that, I served in the New York State Assembly, I had a very high rating with the NRA. I'm a very proud member, almost an A-plus rating with the NRA. Uh, of course, as you know, I was not a supporter of the SAFE Act. And that night, working with David uh, uh, DiPietro, we probably saved about 20 careers because when people saw that I voted against that bill, we had many people come over and we explained to them at that time why it was not a good bill. And we know that the rest is history. So I witnessed firsthand as a former assembly member uh, the messages of necessity, the rushing of putting bills, very important bills, on people's desks, and they were told by leadership, vote for the bill. And I used to call it the Christmas tree because you used to see a lot of red 
and a few little green lights. But then when the leadership walked around and really twisted arms, you'd see a lot of green. Green meant yes, red was no. So a lot of people were no's, and then all of a sudden, uh, when leadership came around and they twisted their arms, they became greens, they became yeses. I never was a yes, uh, probably still not a yes person. I'm probably the only elected official in the history of the New York State Assembly that didn't caucus with anyone. I didn't caucus with the Republicans. I didn't caucus with the Democrats. Um, I was independent. That's never been done in the history. Uh, I left the Democratic conference when I saw a corrupt Sheldon Silver, and I said I wouldn't come back until he was arrested. And thank God he was arrested yeah. <laughs> because he was very, very corrupt. Yes, mm -hmm. that deserves a round of applause. Oh, yeah. And I don't think people understand the corruption in Albany until you're part of the process. Remember, three people in the room, three people making decisions on a very important state budget. And if those three people are from downstate, and if those issues are downstate matters, it's very difficult to get things done. I'll leave you with this. When I was leaving the assembly, uh, one of the last bills that I worked on we were saving the Children's Psychiatric Center. And that building in West Seneca was rated number one in the state. It served 19 counties. And Senator Galvin and myself, he passed the bill in the Senate. It passed unanimously. I passed the bill in the Assembly. It passed unanimously. And even though that facility was rated number one, the governor vetoed it. The governor vetoed it. And people said, Mickey, and even my staff members, isn't it time to give up? And I said, I'm never going to start fighting. I'm never going to stop fighting for those children. I had young people that said to me, Mr. Kearns, if it wasn't for the West Seneca Children's Psychiatric Center, I'd be dead. I'm a productive member of society because of that facility, because of that staff, because of those people. And I said... How do we quit on our young people? How do we quit on people who are facing mental health challenges? I'm not going to do that. So what did we do? We hit the road, we hit the pavement, we went out, we secured nearly 17,000 signatures. And one day, I was in my office, I knew I became the new county clerk, and I got a phone call that the governor changed his mind, that they're gonna keep the facility open, and we were able to win that fight. And that was not easy. That was years, nearly five years of fighting to save that facility. Not just me, the West New York delegation, uh, many different assembly members and senators, but someone had to take the lead on that fight. Someone had to be first. And I know Senator Galvin and I were the first people to take that uh, to Albany. So now, leaving Albany, I become the county clerk and I'm looking at an issue, and there's a bill called the Green Light Bill. And this bill uh, was filed, and it would give people who are here illegally a driver's license. And if you remember, and I know there's probably not a person in here who doesn't remember this, but on September 11th, we were attacked by terrorists. And because of that, many people died, and we went to war, and we are still at war today. And in 2005, Congress passed the Real ID Act. And you say to yourself, well, what is that? And the federal government was thinking, and I think they were right, that we need one uniform ID, and it raised the standard of identification so people uh, could not get a false ID, could not get it on an airplane, could not fly airplanes into buildings, could not attack uh, our capital, Washington, if it wasn't for those brave heroes in Shank, Pennsylvania, to take that plane down. Though they were thinking, and that bill passed unanimously. Now, along the way, there were some iterations and some changes and some amendments, and people came on board, and they voted against it, and they voted for it. But ultimately, it passed unanimously. And New York State had to become compliant with all other states in the country by October 1st, 2020. So at that date, 
And I always say to people, you can pull your license out, and if you look at it, uh, if you are a United States citizen, you need an enhanced driver's license or a passport by October 1st, 2020, to get on an airplane, to fly domestically, to get into a federal building, to cross into Canada. This is some very serious business. We are raising the standards to protect our citizenship. I think we all remember, and I'm included, that when we used to fly and our flight left at one o'clock, uh, many of us would get there about quarter to one, check in, and we would run just like O.J. Simpson down the hallway, and we would get in there. And we would probably, right before the door closed, we'd say, wait a second, wait a second, I'm here, I'm here. And the young lady or young man would take our ticket and we would get on. Now we know that those days are over. Those are the old days. Those are the pre-9-11 days. Now you have to get there two to three hours earlier. You have to go through security. We all know that. So this is some serious stuff. A license is uh, identification. It is a privilege. As Erie County Clerk, I've seen people who, they will come to me and say, Mickey, I'm late on my child support. Uh, I did not pay my child support. The law states you cannot have a driver's license if you don't pay your child support. If you have violated the motor vehicle traffic law, you can't have a license. Once again, it's a privilege. It's not a right. It's a privilege. So you look at all those different things, and then add in the real ID, and the legislature starts talking about a green light bill. When I became the clerk, I told you earlier I was in business before I got in politics, and I looked at the operation and I said, we need more people. It was just basic common sense. We need more hours. We added two Saturdays. The only auto bureau in the state of New York that has two Saturdays open. We get people from throughout the state coming to get their traffic and their, uh, their automobile, their registrations done on Saturday. Our business is up 50%. You may be saying, why are you telling me all this stuff, Mickey? Why are you telling me this? There's a reason why I'm telling you this. Because when the New York State Legislature passed the green light bill, it is now in the state of New York, there is a lower standard for people that were not born in this country, they can now get a license with a foreign passport or a foreign, a foreign driver's license. That's it. So if you come in to the Auto Bureau, even if you see me and I know you, and you don't have six points of ID, if you don't have an original birth certificate, if you don't have an original Social Security card, if you are married, if there are any women here today, and you are married, uh, of course, you didn't meet your husband uh, at birth, right? That would be pretty amazing. But if, And you have a different name, you'd have to change your name if you did change your name. And if you did do that, then you have to bring in your marriage certificate. These, this is a complex transaction. This isn't a transaction that you come in, we get you in and out. We have to verify this documentation. We have to send this documentation to Albany. And we're doing our best to handle that. We now have a reservation system. So you can go online, area.gov. You can make a reservation, just like when you get a haircut, you get an oil change. We're doing our best to make it uh, easy and as efficient for you. But over the next three years, we are facing the highest number of renewals. Now, they pass the green light bill. Someone is going to be able to come in. Those same people in our office, uh, in all the auto bureaus, they're working very hard. They are going to have to decipher between a passport. There's 195 countries. How are those people who are not trained to decipher that information, how are they going to do that? Well, I know they're not going to do it because I'm not going to let them do it. I'm not going to issue driver's license. County Clerk, Mickey Kearns. But still, the pressure that these people are facing, and in addition to that, the reason why I want you to look at that op-ed, I want you to read it, because it's so important. Right now, New York State is selling your information to third parties. They, they, have, they, have, they get about $65 million. It's all in that op-ed that I wrote in May. You should be able right now to opt out, because the state of New York doesn't give you that opportunity to opt out 
when you come in, they shouldn't be able to sell your information while they're doing it. Right now, uh, if they expunge that database, when people come in to get their license, uh, they will not, I mean, how are they going to, how are they going to sell that, that information? If they don't want that information or that database to be created and they have to destroy that information, they won't be selling their information. They'll still be selling your information that's in the database. So this is really important stuff. And when I became clerk, I took an oath of office to uphold the Constitution and the state of New York. And looking at this bill, and the governor passing this in midnight, uh, very quickly, I've never seen that done before, that a bill is passed and signed so quickly. I don't think even the SAFE Act was signed that quick. Uh, it's, a, it's amazing. So we're going to look at this. Uh, we're going to make sure that we do everything right. And, but we need your help. You know, we're going to need your help. You know, the, the Auto Bureau, just with what's going on with the Real ID, uh, we're at all-time numbers. Like I said, last year, uh, our surplus was about $8.4 million that we sent to the County of Erie. That doesn't include everything that we sent to the State of New York. All of the Auto Bureaus in the State of New York is about a $1 billion business for New York State. That's a lot of money for them. So we need your help. And what I'm going to do, and I've asked, I've already uh, drafted a letter to the county attorney's office. I've asked them to represent me. Uh, I'm going to file a suit in federal court and to find out uh, what my rights and duties are as a county clerk. I'm not going to issue the driver's license, as I stated. I'm not going to do that. Okay. And as Carl said, there is no perfect politician. We know that. Uh, my mother thought I was perfect, but I know I'm not. <laughs> I know. The first time I ran for office, uh, I ran for the South District Council, and we ran against a really uh, nice young man, and he has a very big family, and I was not the incumbent. I was the outsider. I was independent. I was not in politics for a while, but I decided I wanted to give back. I wanted to serve. I wanted to do more for my community, and we end up winning that race with a lot of help from people in this room, and I remember, I believe, I received 56% of the vote. And my mother, God bless her, uh, she's not with us anymore, but my mother used to be a committee woman, and I've never seen anyone say no to her on getting a petition. She used to go out for Jimmy Griffin. She could get a petition like no one I ever saw in my life. And she's in the corner, and she's really upset. And I said, Mom, come on. You know, we just won this election. This is great. We beat an incumbent. And she said, who are these 42 other percent of these people? I want to know who they are. I want you to get 100%. So when I ran out of post, I said, Seema, I got 100%. No, 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 you're not counting the blanks. So I couldn't get anything past her. So we, you know, we want to get involved in politics. We need good people. We need independent people in politics. Jimmy Griffin said to me, and I believe it, if you're independent and you work for the people, you never have to run for an election. Amen. This is what we need. We don't need people who are controlled by the party bosses. We need independent people. And that's, that's what I've been. I think, uh, I think I might be the only person in the state of New York that's been elected on the Democratic and the Republican line. I don't think there's anyone that's been elected on two separate lines. So it's important. Uh, it's important to get the proper information. We have the green light bill, and I would be remiss if I didn't talk a little bit uh, in the last couple of minutes about what we're doing in the pistol permit department. Um, one of the top priorities when I came in was uh, doing an assessment and evaluation of that department. Great people that work there uh, are very, very Erie nice County people. Clerk, Mickey but it, does, it didn't mean that we couldn't make some changes and we couldn't make some improvements. Uh, one of the first things we did, we had a handle, which the staff did an unbelievable job, the recertification, because five years from the SAFE Act, and we had hundreds and hundreds of people, nearly 34,000 people uh, recertified, and others, as you know, did it by paper, and I'm sure the state police are still counting those, and we're still getting those numbers from the state police. Uh, we don't know what that number will be. Finally, it might be years and years before we get the true number, only God knows. But that was important. 
And one of the things we did, which was important, was opening, there was a satellite that was opened up for a very short period of time, and we opened up two satellites. We're now in Alma and Chitawaga. And now, you know, my goal long term is, you know, I, not that I don't like downtown, I love downtown, it's a great place, but uh, with the growth of downtown, parking is expensive, um, and uh, we want to give people an opportunity to do their business without coming downtown. So we're working on that. We've got some ideas, but at least now today, remember, I've only been in that office for a year and a half, and we have two new satellite locations. The other thing that we're doing, and I know Bud is going to be working with us on some things, is we're re-engineering the office. And my goal, uh, working with our, our chief, Alan Brown, and the other staff, is that this is a goal, and I think we could do it. My goal is to get the pistol permit process down to about two months. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Two months. Wow. Yes. Now, that's not going to be an easy goal. But I think one of the things we've done, and I think we've changed the process, we've been working with the sheriff. Uh, first, I want to thank Sheriff Howard for all his support. And now he deserves a round of applause. <laughs> one of the first meetings I took was with Sheriff Howard on the first day, my first day in office, and Sheriff Howard uh, sat down with me. He said, whatever we can do to make sure people have access to the Second Amendment, Mickey, I'm with you. So I want to thank Sheriff Howard for that. I want to thank Judge Bowler. Judge Bowler, he deserves another a round of applause also. <laughs> the judge has been unbelievable, uh, supportive, and we're just changing some things around. Working with the judge and the sheriff, we've shortened the application. We're trying to make it more user-friendly, uh, trying to, to make sure that people can get that done. We're changing some of the processes, like having people do the fingerprinting uh, prior to them coming in, which should expedite the process. Uh, we've got some new computers and some uh, new database where we're able to track each file through the process. We're just working on that today. And I really believe that if, if it's a clean file, um, if you don't have any issues or any problems, I really don't see why we can't get your pistol permit in two months. We've lowered it down between seven and nine months. Some people might be satisfied with that. I'm not. Um, I'm not satisfied with that. So even though we've made great strides and improvements uh, in that process, I do think we can get that down and have more transparency and we're able to do that. So uh, with that, I want to thank you for giving me that opportunity. If you have questions, um, I know, like I said, I'm not going to be able to stay too long. I have to go home and take a shower and comb my hair for Fox News. Uh, <laughs> I want to look nice. But um, Look for Mickey we're going to be Fox doing News. clerks on the go throughout the county. Um, there's approximately under 500 days uh, till the New York State has to be compliance for the real ID. But we have 250 planned, 250 events is our goal, to plan to reach out to you. Um, you can contact my office, be happy uh, to make sure someone calls you back. If you have questions about the real ID or the enhanced driver's license, We'd be happy to walk you through it. And we're just going to continue to go out to try to help people, especially our senior citizens, uh, people that have language barriers. Uh, we're trying to help people before they come into the office. So I really like being the county clerk. Um, I hope the governor doesn't remove me in January. <laughs> he does have the power to do that. I don't think he will. Uh, but I like being your Erie County clerk. Uh, I think it's a great, great job. I like helping people. It's very important with the many different uh, opportunities to raise revenue and funding for the people. They talk about lowering taxes. Uh, we are the only office in county government that generates a positive surplus. And we're the only, uh, I'm very proud of that because when I came in, one of the first things, and I took a little criticism for it, is I wanted to run that office like a business. I'm the CEO of that business. And I remember one of the workers saying to me, don't you ever take a day off? I said, nope, not taking a day off. I worked 40 hours a week when I ran for re-election. I did my election stuff after work. Uh, I said I was hired to do a job, and that's a job that I'm doing. I love to work. I love serving people. I, I love doing the job. I like representing the county. It's a great opportunity. And uh, to speak with people like yourself, the 1791 uh, team, 
I really appreciate you getting the, giving me this opportunity. And I'm not trying to just question or two. Take a couple questions. Sure. Sure. Yes. Are there any other states that have uh, gone Yes, there's, so we became the 13th state, um, and but here's the difference. So some of the states, if they issued a temporary license, in New York State, you can get, here's the thing, you can get a temporary driver's license, but you have to have the proper documentation. So we all know we'll use an easy company, Moog, they're an international company. We're on an international border. We want to encourage commerce, right? There's people that you know, do business in Canada and other countries. So we, you know, we want to encourage that. So when they have people that come here and they work, they have to drive. So they have the proper documentation. Uh, we have people who are students at the University of Buffalo. They are here from foreign countries. They may be going to medical school or other, doing other things, getting a degree. They're living in our community. They should have access to a driver's license. We're not against that. They're here. They come into the auto bureau. They have proper documentation. Even in some instances, uh, we work with some groups. As long as they have the proper documentation, uh, we're able to serve them, and I'm very proud to serve them. However, it's people who come in who don't have that proper documentation, and what the governor is doing and the state legislature is saying that you can have a foreign passport. I had the opportunity to meet with ICE and Homeland Security and they have conveyed to me their concern because there are foreign countries who are selling passports on the dark web. Pass, uh, that is true, passports that have been stolen. So I don't know how we're going to determine that, but this is a very, situa a very serious situation. So we are the 13th, and those other states have only given temporary licenses, or even in the states now, um, we do have a small section on this that says this is not for federal purposes. But still, I'm very concerned uh, about this uh, new law. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, Mr. Gertz, uh, my concern in relation to these licenses is quote of fraud. Uh, Senator Chris Jacobs mentioned that uh, he's concerned about that. But I want to, in relation to my question, right in Erie County's own backyard, we have some corruption as far as quote of fraud is concerned and conflict of interest. For example, the chairman of the Democratic Party is also the commissioner on the Board of Elections. <clears throat> so I speak to you not as a Republic, uh, uh, Democrat or Republican, but a, first and foremost as an American living in New York State. Hmm. How are we so sure that yes, it is. everyone's message is being looked at there? <laughs> on the Board of Elections, I hear no one speaking about this history. Thank you. It's a great question. And when I was a New York State Assembly member, I carried the bill that stated uh, that Mr. Zellner, I don't believe he should be holding uh, both positions. I had the bill in the Assembly. Uh, there was uh, a gentleman who had the bill in the Senate. I agree with you absolutely. That is uh, corruption 101, uh, having someone who is overseeing uh, local county elections and their head of the local uh, party. So that should be something that should be stopped. Uh, when I had the bill in the legislature, it was conveyed to me that in some communities, they're so small that they needed uh, the party chairperson to be that. I didn't agree, I thought that was BS. I thought that was bull. Uh, so you're absolutely right. It's happening right under our noses. Uh, I don't agree that Mr. Zellner should be holding both positions. Uh, recently, the Buffalo News, did an article, there was a uh, complaint by Mr. James Egan, and he stated that there was uh, some funds that were uh, misappropriated uh, by Mr. Zellner, and I'm hopeful that uh, the county commissioners do the right thing, and if not, that Mr. Egan goes directly uh, to the state. Uh, so that won't be any love loss for me. I, I, I definitely agree with you on that, but we should not have uh, commissioners uh, who are heading up local parties who are then part of the Board of Elections. They are deciding elections, and as we know, elections are close. They could be decided by a few votes. Uh, someone who's trying to make the ballot, they make the decision, and in many instances, people may not qualify for the ballot uh, because of those decisions. So I agree with you 100%. Mm -hmm. yes, Mr. Kurtz, I've heard a lot of cons on why we should not give illegal aliens 
what were the pros that the people had voted to do this? Why, why, were, they, why were they doing it? Why, what, what? One of the, what he asked, you know, we've heard a lot of the uh, reasons why we don't think it's, it was a good law. He asked the question, well, why uh, would some people vote for it? Well, here's something that I will tell you. Um, right now, they conveyed to us and they stated that people need to get to and from work, correct? That they work on farms, they need to get to and from work. However, in 1986, they, uh, Congress passed a law that stated that it is illegal to hire someone who is here illegally. That is illegal. So in the memo, this is one of the reasons why I'm following my uh, suit in federal court, uh, there is uh, some conflict. And the conflict is, how do you pass a law that's in conflict with the federal government? How do you do that? There's something called the Supremacy Clause, and federal law always trumps uh, state law. So we know that. So. The second thing they talked about was the possibility of our roads being safer. Once again, not true. Most of these people are at the lower economic end, and they're fighting, just like us, to put food on the table. And they're not going to be able to afford that insurance, even if they could qualify for that, because they're going to be in a, a, a risk pool. So we know that the insurance industry said when they write those policies, those policies are going to be very high, very expensive. If it's insurance or putting food on the table, we all know what we would do for our families. We would put food on the table. They're not going to get insurance. It's not going to happen. So in my mind, uh, the only reason why this bill was voted on was political reasons, uh, political uh, strong arming, and probably uh, political horse trading uh, and backdoor deals in Albany. As far as global goes. Correct. Yes. Agreed. Yeah, Nikki, what would prevent you from, um, at the end of the day, writing down all these people's names, sending an email to ICE, and part two of the question is, if you didn't do that, and I'm not a lawyer, wouldn't you be aiding and abetting a criminal? That's true. That's why I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to break federal law. My father used to say there's no right way to do a wrong thing. I'm not going to do it. So I've already met with Homeland Security. They've already conveyed to us that they will give us uh, people, assign people to help us. And, uh, you know, we can't stop. I'm only the Erie County clerk. We can't stop people from going to state facilities. There's a state facility in Syracuse. They could go there. But, you know, we're not going to do it in Erie County. And uh, you're absolutely correct. I think the governor had cold feet at the last minute when he asked the Solicitor General for an opinion. Solicitor General works for the Attorney General, and he stated, you know, are they going to have access to that database? Because now when we generate that database, we're going to know who is here illegally. So it's very interesting. Um, I think they're going to be very surprised because I'm not the only clerk. There's many clerks throughout the state of New York that are very upset. We only get 12.75% per transaction. So the rest of that money goes to Albany, uh, nearly 73%. And many of the clerks wanted a raise this year, um, just a small raise to help with their budgets. In Erie County, we're doing well, but in some of the smaller counties, uh, they're just breaking even. And if they do issue license to uh, undocumented individuals, uh, it may break them. The lines, and I'll leave you with this, in California, I mentioned you can get an appointment, right? Go online, erie.gov, you can get an appointment. In California, it's 24 days to get an appointment to get a license. I talked to someone today, and uh, they said, I'm from California. And I said, well, you'll be waiting three weeks for a license if you go back. Hey, Ricky. Yes. On that note, why don't you just tell the governor that every illegal alien that you issue a license to, got documentation going to recognize. Yeah, and in your office, post it on the wall. we were talking about that, putting up signage and posting it. Uh, you know, we're not even going to do it. It's not even going to get to that point where I don't think they're even going to come in to the office if they try to come in. You know, here's what infuriates me. We have veterans. We have senior citizens. We have hardworking people. And every day, because the state doesn't send the proper information, I'm an agent of the state. So when you get a letter in the mail, it's not from the county clerk's office, it's from the state of New York. And they don't send, I, I mentioned uh, people who 
names changed, like maybe someone who was married, their name has changed. And if you don't think it breaks my heart that when someone comes in and they're elderly or they're a veteran, they served our country, and we have to say to them, no. This, we have to turn away because you have to go home and get the proper uh, documentation. They have to bring a marriage certificate or a passport in. That's not my law. That breaks my heart. And we're trying to get the word out there to let people know about that. But we say no to citizens, but we can't say no to illegal aliens? So that's not going to happen. Earlier today, the Monroe County Executive is speaking out against the uh, driver's license for illegals. Why can't we try to work together, get all of the clerks in New York State that are against this, all the all the county executives that are against this, and form like a coalition to stand up to Cuomo? We are working on that, Russ. It's a good idea. We are trying to gather all of the elected officials. I know I, I talked to Joe from Niagara County, the clerk of Niagara County. And he's sort of the um, Western uh, clerk director, and he was putting the word out there today. And we are going to do that uh, to let them know. The bill will not become law for 180 days. So we do have some time, even though the governor signed the bill so quickly last night. Uh, the bill won't become law for 180 days. So I do think what you're going to see is uh, it's an unfunded mandate from Albany. We are not getting any additional revenue. All the revenue would be going to Albany. So uh, we, the taxpayers of Berry County, are going to have to pick up this bill. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to have to hire additional workers, uh, additional security, uh, this is uh, additional hours. I mean, this is some serious stuff. And uh, it is an unfunded mandate. But yes, we are working on putting that coalition together. Bravo. What would happen if you done? What a term <laughs> yeah, good well, luck with that. Boy, I, it's almost like I, these people are asking these questions like I, I have them like, I used to carry that bill in the New York State Assembly too. <laughs> I believe in term limits and, you know, it has to be done legislatively. I believe my bill was 12 years uh, for an assemblyman, a senator, uh, the governor, the controller, uh, the attorney general. Um, you know, that bill almost got some traction. Um, uh, Senator Griffo and I had the Senate Bill 9, the Assembly Bill, um, I believe in term limits. So we would have to get uh, that bill passed, and uh, the governor would have to sign it in order to do that, to get term limits at the state level. But I did have that bill. Yes. <laughs> It will pertain to New York State driver's licenses, absolutely. So standard driver's license. So, so non-New York State ID, non-driver's ID? Well, you can, get, you can still get non-driver's ID. You can still get the non-driver's ID, so it's a standard. It's, you know, ID is ID, it's identification. Um, but, you know, it will be all of the IDs, yes, correct. And if, if you guys bring a suit to the state, are you going to be Yes, and, and you know, it's, it's a good question. You know, it's like the whole thing about I was just following orders. So it's a good question. I, I think there's lots of questions that are going to be talked about and answered. Remember, on a, the, best thing, the best example I can give is the SAFE Act. We know that was rushed, that bill, and then obviously there's been litigation and many questions afterwards. Yes, I know you have a question. Yes. She just asked who voted and who voted against the bill. We could do that. We'll go this way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You got to say that one more time. I apologize. Will this be No, it will not be. In a, it'll be a standard driver's license. So what I was going to say is, with the creation of the Real ID Act, there are now three driver's licenses. Only. U.S. citizens can get an enhanced driver's license. That's it. So only a U.S. citizen can get an enhanced driver's license. The Real ID 
Um, you don't have to be a U.S. citizen, but you have to have the proper documentation. So this is a standard driver's license. Can they, can they fly on a plane? They will not be able to get on a plane, no, without, without either, if they have a passport, now if they have a foreign passport, they can get on the plane, but uh, they will not be able to use a license. We can use the enhanced driver's license, the real ID, or a passport. They would have to have a foreign passport to get on, uh, according to TSA. Yes. No permanent. It's permanent. This will be their license. They will have to take, just like everyone else, they will have to take a driver's test, they will have to take a test, and they will have to take a road test, uh, just like everyone else. Uh, but it will be a permanent license. Once they have it, they will have that forever. <laughs> New forms, interpreters, yes, there's going to be a lot of different costs that are going to be associated with this. Yes, correct. Can't hear him and these are really good questions. I mean, and I, I can say this probably, whether it's, you know, consultants to, you know, verify identification for passports, interpreters, new, I mean, these are all unfunded mandates from Albany. Anything you could think of, uh, security that we're going to have to do, longer lines, uh, these are all the uh, impacts and effects of this law. Yes. Erie County Clerk, Mickey Kearns. I appreciate it, and like I said, you can contact my office. One, I do have one final question. You mentioned that there are other clerks that feel the same way you do, but are they taking the same stand? Yes, yes. Not, we were looking at probably six or seven. Um, but, you know, until you step up and put your name on a piece of paper and say, I'm going to do it, I know the Niagara County clerk, I work with them very well. Uh, Joe said he's with me 100%. He has been uh, very vocal. We've got to get the rest of the clerks to, st uh, to stand up and join us, as Russ said, and the county executives, and the county legislators. But as, as I stated, um, if you didn't get an opportunity uh, to sign in, we have some uh, sign-in sheets. And as I stated, we have that op But I'm going to give you the, oh, okay. two more. Okay. What can we do as a group to help you? So, as they say, stay tuned. What we need is uh, we need everyone to sign up to get their information. If they can't get it tonight, we're going to be reaching out to your group for support. We're going to be putting that coalition together. So stay tuned. We'll be letting you know what's, what's going on with this. And I'm going to give you the final, final question. <laughs> We started this morning, that's right, at, at, at the Key Center. So what you're saying, what you're saying, what you're saying, they can, that's correct. So she answered, she said, you know, right now there's a different, so there's a lower standard and she said they can, at some point in time, vote. When, because of the motor voter law, uh, we come in, that person goes in and they're asked, uh, you know, can they uh, register to vote? They're, they get to say yes or no. Um, I do think, do I think people make mistakes? Of course, we give people the benefit of the doubt. But if someone makes a mistake, they are registered. The two sponsors of the bill, when they were debating on the assembly in the Senate floor, they admitted there are already people who are here illegally that are registered to vote. Yeah. 
Now you talk about foreign influence. We've been hearing a lot about Russia over the past two years. Yeah. We've got a lot of foreign influence going on here. Thank you very and much. And it can only get worse. So you're absolutely right. And I know I just saw uh, our county controller come in. That's right, I don't know if he went to the bathroom. He stuck out there. <laughs> <laughs>